Today's episode starts at FFM Fabrication here in the Sunshine Coast with my mate Dave. We are modifying Kai's exhaust manifold to fit the K70 to house a Go Fast Bits EX44 wastegate. We left off last episode, we got Kai's K24 head off, resealed, back together, but we've pulled the exhaust manifold off because we're modifying the wastegate. He had some troubles with the old one and we're changing it to the EX44. The old one was a 50 mil wastegate and it has got a different flange, so we've got to modify the inlet flange and then also the outlet flange. We need to make up a whole nother exit pipe too. We're going to plumb that back to atmosphere. So. Get on the grinder, cut this flange off, and then weld the new one on. Dave has got functioning welders, which I don't yet, so it's all come up here. Thanks, Dave. Yep, no problem. Right on. For those of you who don't know, Dave is the Don. He makes, designs and fabricates these airboxes to suit many of vehicle. Australian made quality boxes for cruisers, Hiluxes, what else are you doing? Uh, mainly them at the moment. Yeah. What about BT50s? Mainly those weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> Mitsubishi Pajeros. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Dave does a bunch of this stuff, awesome quality stuff. So get on, if you've got a cruiser or something, get on the FFM fabrication website. Dave's got some awesome gear here, welders, you've got press brakes and all the rest of it. There's a CNC router in the next room, so pretty cool. And um, yeah, obviously welding bench and get the TIG on there to fill this in. Get it sorted. Pressure's on, Davo, now they can judge your welds instead of mine. And <laughs> what <laughs> I had the zoom on that one too, that was so good. <laughs> because it's a K24 and they vibrate to buggery, we're just putting some gussets on the pipe. It's all thin wall stainless, so anything can happen. All right, I'm gonna bend this up. How's this massive Whoa. machine? <laughs> <laughs> For the world's tiniest bracket. Oh, killer. How good is it, It just, just keeps getting bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger. <laughs> so what's this? Woody's doing one side and then Kai does the other side. Whichever side snaps off is... You reckon? <laughs> is that who the better welder is? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> when, when the wastegate's bouncing down the track, we'll be like, which side snapped off? <laughs> Finished up at Dave's house, we got the manifold welded up and also put it on the linisher and got it really flat. It's actually funny how much a manifold, even a four cylinder one, can bow so much just from all the heat uh, cycles the manifold does. So that's ready to go on. I've got a gasket and I've just cleaned up the uh, head surface anyway. So ready to get bolted on. The dump pipe has to be kind of positioned and zip, top, zip tied out of the way because it only goes in when the manifold's not there. So we'll get that done. And then Kai's gonna come around and take it home and back, throw it back onto the dyno when we're ready. Kai has requested a exhaust manifold pressure port in the turbine housing. The ECU is out of inputs, he's fully tapped on the ECU, so Kai's dyno actually has, um, you can log it via the dyno, so I'm just gonna place it right here. 
there's a nice little thick part here which I can drill and tap into um, put a little plug in it that way Kai can monitor the exhaust manifold pressure and see if it's causing an issue just installing the boost rag so I don't get any swarf stuck in the housing I usually would pull it apart but I don't want to mess around it's gonna be a quick easy drill and tap through here so that'll be done sweet Now just grab a bung to block it off and Kai can hook up the sensor once he's on the dyno. Oh, the boss man's rocked up to check over my work, eh? Looking good, mate. <laughs> so I guys just used a uh, new air temp sensor, which is pretty cool. Where's the packet going? Where's that? Uh, it's a new Siltec sensor, this one, which is a fast response, you say, mate? Yeah, so it's the glass bead technology as opposed to the normal one. So yeah, the whole idea behind it is it's the- uh, Oh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah is it's much more fast reacting. Anyone who's ever seen an intake air temp trace a lot of the time, it's kind of like EGT to some extent, is it? it's kind of like what you're seeing on the sensor might be what happened a few seconds ago, yeah. whereas these are supposed to be very quick reacting. Sweet. So I previously had a normal one in there, so I'm just keen to see what the new one looks like. All right, now I've got some focus, do that again. <laughs> Bartender, oh, it's dripping everywhere too. Oh, man. As your arm the comment work. section's right, I do need to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Exhaust manifold's back on the car, turbo's bolted on with the Go Fast Bits EX44 wastegate on there, plumbed up, ready to go. Plumbed back to atmosphere, Kai, ready to go, mate. Ready for the street. Absolutely. And now we've Absolutely. just, um, Kai's actually had the injectors cleaned too. We just got them quickly zipped up and um, cleaned. Thank you, Mark. And now we're about to hit the key. See if we did it right, eh? Well, yeah. Oh, you broke it. And I had On the... It's definitely a mess. Might need to speak to your tuner about the cold starts. Yeah, no, it normally starts mint. It's weird. Just start. Check engine light. Yeah, no. Oh, you know what it'll be? I bet you the cam sensors are on the wrong. The intake and the exhaust cam will be swapped over. Oh, oh the smart guy here. I bet, mate. That'd be my my bad. Because they're the same plug, are they? Yeah. They're the same plug. I should have enabled it, but I was like, eh. Uh, you'll know. <laughs> coming apart. I'm like, you'll know if it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. What is that? Or is that just water? That'd be fuel. Be fuel. Fuel from the exhaust from it being so fat. Maybe. It's been pumping out the exhaust. It's a hell of a lot. I saw this one on uh, Keep It Reet. Lucky I've got a fire extinguisher in my hand right here. It's good. Ready. Okay. Ready to go. <laughs>
First start after replacing the hair gasket went smoothly, apart from the cam tensor was swapped around, but we got it good. <laughs> and now Kai's replacing the diff. Uh, if you remember when I was at Road Trip Drag Challenge, actually that video hasn't got too many views, so if you haven't seen it, click, I think it's this corner. Uh, Kai broke the diff in the K and it went and threw the camera in his face. I had a spare center. This spare center that's in the car is very noisy and Kai has built another diff. So while it's here on the hoist, we're gonna swap the diff out. Then we can throw it on the dyno and get back to making some great, I'm gonna say real horsepower, but it's a Honda. So is it real horsepower? I don't think so. I think it's like- I think you need a barra like for that one. It's not actually oh, horses. Yeah. Or it's like horses with three legs or something. 570 unicorns. Who did these up? They're really like- Oh, my car? Nah. I'm pretty sure it was me on the ground underneath the car. So I don't. Unless they've like loosened themselves. I definitely tighten them up like as tight as I could get them on the ground. Oh, that came straight out with ease. Oh, first go. <laughs> We're about to throw the diff back in the car, but Kai is going to explain the Japanese 9 inch and what you've done. Sure. And the differences in the two discs, because they are, as a, I didn't realise this, but yeah, one's a V6 centre and one is just a generic. Yeah, plain, plain Jane four cylinder one, yeah. So you can clearly see the difference in the diff housings, how much extra ribbing and webbing is in it. Um, this V6 centre, the side bearings are larger as well as the pinion bearings are way larger. Um, like that to that, they're like a crazy amount different. Um, the, I guess they are the same axle and everything. They're, still, they're all 30 spine axle and everything like that. But um, yeah, this is our old, this is the spare center. It's just an old weldy, you know what I mean? Just good old open center that's had the uh, CIG locker poured in there. Um, having said that, it's done us very well. Um, this is the center we're going to, which is obviously the V6 center. It's got a spool in it. Um, as Woody said before, this is a full-time grocery getter, I mean race car. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't really bother me that it's a spool. Um, it's cheap and it's effective and it doesn't break. Um, the, that's probably the only real big things that we, we yeah, need to know. The ratio we run, it's a 488. They're both 488s, um, which does mean that the crown wheel is quite narrow and the pinion head is quite small if you look in there. So probably if you were going for outright strength in a high like stiff, this probably wouldn't be your choice. Um, but we run this ratio because it works with the R151 and the way we leave, which was in second gear. So uh, that's why we run this. But yeah, definitely because of that small pinion head, small crown wheel, the teeth are a little bit weaker on these than say like a 3.7 or something like that. But uh, having said that, it can still normally hold quite a bit of power if you are uh, remembered to turn the slipper on. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so probably worth mentioning, we say Japanese 9 inch, but it's a Hilux G series. Yeah, Hilux G series. So eight, eight and a half inch crown wheel, yeah? Uh, yeah, eight, eight and a half inch. Uh, well, I'd have to remember that. I, how many shackers is it? That's how you measure it. You've got the finger chromometer. Finger yeah, chromometer. finger chromometer. I always see them as eight inch, but maybe it is eight and a half. Oh, that's a About one question. shaka. Yeah. I'm sure eight. somebody will correct us in the comments. Um, the, but yeah, they are regarded as a fairly strong diff. Um, having said that, I actually had a four wheel drive back in the day and anybody who knows Hilux diffs are not highly regarded in four wheel driving. Like if you've got 35s and up and reduction gears, you're breaking centers <laughs> all the time. So they're definitely not indestructible. Um, but having said that, in a light little thousand kilo Corolla, um, they are pretty bloody strong. Compared to a T-series diff or whatever else you would yeah. run, they're very strong, yeah. Yep. When there's Corollas, there's a Miller appears with beer. <laughs> this is true. We've had a costume change and thrown the Corolla back on the dyno here at Knight Family Motorsport with the man himself, 
and I've just rocked up. I missed out, but Kaiser's done a few power runs and um, it's actually looking quite spicy. So with the new EX44 wastegate and the four port solenoid, Kai's able to run five pound on the green mark here, which is 290 horsepower. And then uh, I'm not too sure how much boost the last run he did before I just rocked up there, but 24 pound, 24 pound there you go, 590 horsepower at the top here and a buttload of torque. So that is, look, for a, for a four cylinder, that is crazy power. It's and and oh, a very basic one too. Like a yeah, it's a wreckers motor with a couple of Chinese bits thrown at it. <laughs> so tell us, talk us through. Oh, how'd the back pressure go too? Yeah, that... it's good. We can show some data on that. Yeah, actually, yeah. If anyone's keen. So we added the back pressure sensor or well, port into the rear housing of the turbo, and we can go through some data. So here's some data here. It's a little bit probably hard to see, but essentially each set of lines corresponds to. The boost and back pressure at that point so yep. as you can see here at wastegate pressure we can do some actual measurements we we'll drop some curses on here so at wastegate pressure it's making five point or six point three pounds of boost i will mention that this we are if you look at it where we're measuring it we are measuring this is to give it a fair shake of the turbo so we're measuring the pre-intercooler pressure yep. versus the turbine pressure sometimes if you compare manifold pressure then you don't really get a true uh like a true reading of what the turbo is actually doing because if you've got five pound drop across your intercooler you might go oh my boosted back pressure is really bad but yep. realistically the turbo needs to be measured here so we're just measuring the turbo here so we're measuring turbo outlet to turbine inlet right um and so if you look at that so compressor outlet pressure of 6.3 pounds with the turbine inlet pressure of 5.5 so it's better than one to one at that level and then was, as we look we got three levels here they're just arbitrary levels as we were going through but uh, we'll just, and we'll pick 6,000 up here for argument's sake. Um, and then when we turn the boost up a bit, we're at sort of 10 pounds. And as you can see, it's the, the, you know, the cursors are down here on top of each other. So yeah, 10 to yeah. 10. Uh, just on this higher run, this is the red line. We just did the 590 run. So you can see if we take it right up the top here, we had a boost pressure of, uh, let's call it 24 pounds. Um, we'll go out here. So yeah, 24 PSI. And then if we look at the back pressure, we're saying, so, we got 25.9 pounds of back pressure for 23.7 pounds of boost pressure. So yep. slightly just breaking past the one to one uh, ratio. This engine being, uh, we'll see how it goes, but like realistically, as I'd said at the start of the start of the <laughs> series, <laughs> before we, <laughs> we lifted the head, we didn't really need any more power. The car was already co like competitive, and we're probably on the edge of what the transmission can hold anyway. So. It was more about getting the control for if the air is bad and stuff like that to be able to maintain that pressure because we were seeing sometimes it was a really hot day or something um the boost control would be tapped out and i couldn't put any more power in the car so that's what we're really doing i do think though just because it'd be rude not to we may see and just tickle it with a little bit more spice and see if we can crack the 600. <laughs> yeah sick so that would pretty well mean that this turbo is well out of efficiency that kind of uh, boost pressure now well, like, uh, not uh, well out but you're getting there like it's yeah. it's up to about 1.3 to 1 boost to back pressure, right? So 1.3 times back pressure over boost pressure. I would say the turbo will still make very efficient gains. As you can see, like when we did the step ups in boost, obviously they're kind of crude, just jumps, but that's just, there is other runs, but we're just trying not to get too many lines on the screen. Um, but you can see the, you know, enormous jump in power. Once you start to drive it past 1.3, 1 1.4 to 1 boost to back pressure, the gains per pound of boost will start to come right down. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's where... On top of that, if you did have a turbo speed sensor, like some of us do, <laughs> like Woody does, um, then you would actually see that you're probably starting to spin the shaft speed of the turbo up past right close to its limit yeah. um, when the back pressure starts to come up and away. So yeah, that's where, we'd, you know, like I said, it, this thing is not about the most powerful K-series in the universe. It's not, and I don't even want it to be. It's more about... Uh, being competitive for the race we caught the yeah, sick. racing. So. Of course. So with that four port solenoid too, you're now able to run minimum so we've got a gate spring there's five pounds. So you can run five pounds if you want. Yep. The EX forty four didn't hold you back either, no? No, no. So yeah, that, I think it's to do with the priority. I mean, realistically, what we so you'd see it has a slight, a slight increase over RPM, which would in, in, be indicative of a wastegate that's maybe a bit too small. So if I just put a straight line there, you can see that yeah, it's slightly coming up with RPM. Yeah. But it's nothing, you know. Like realistically, it's like 
a half a pound or a pound across the entire rev range of the engine. Yep. Um, which, like I said, it, I think even uh, Koval had said if you were going to choose a wastegate for your K24, and EX44 probably would not be your first choice, you'd probably Go put a 50 us. on it. Yeah. Uh, we had a 44 on the shelf, and then if you have seen the priority on this is like very yeah. very good it's like got an even choice to go through the turbo or through the wastegate which is perfect scenario for getting flow out of the wastegate and has and i think that's why we're getting away with it if you tried this on something that didn't have priority quite like that chances are you'd have boost creep like crazy solid info there from kai and with the four port solenoid we're able to run five pounds through to that 24 can you write can you Crank that up more, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I think we will. We'll we'll, we'll right. go for another round. But yeah, like to put it in perspective, even at twenty four pounds of boost, there, I think we're only about twenty four percent duty cycle on yeah. the uh, boost control solenoid. Sweet. So that gives you an idea of like going a lot further. Kai just wants to see the magic six hundred horsepower number. That's all. So do I, actually. Truth be told. What's the magic number? Was it 30 pound when you lifted the head? What was that just then? Uh, 28. 20. 28 at the, yeah, 28 at the top there. How's yeah. that cooling pressure sensor looking? It's looking pretty good. You can come have a look at it. Yeah, I'll come around. Yeah, yeah sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's wild on your ears, hey. It's like, just that four cylinder screaming. That's the run oh, there. So you can see, a little start, bit, hey. but having said that, it's even at wastegate, like you'll see if we go, uh, you know, you obviously got to compare. So some of that's the, uh, restriction through the radiator core. Yep. So you'll see like a, a trend of it coming up with RPM if we go way back to the start of the day. So yeah, here's some wastegate spring runs for a comparison. And so you can see here that even at wastegate spring, you see we do see, say at the start of the run, it's 4.4 pounds in the cooling system. At the top of the revs, it's around 10. Yep. Right, so we see it's like draining five. But then as soon as you come off, you see the coolant pressure returns. As the engine RPM returns, the water pump speed slows down, the coolant pressure comes straight back again. Um, That's common with a lot of engines though too, I suppose everything's going to have a, a rise with the water pump. Anything generally with a, um, a mechanical water pump, like yeah. an engine driven water pump will show a, like essentially we're seeing the restriction across the radiator core. Yep. Um, but then if we go to the last log there where we were turning her up a bit, um, you can see definitely the trend is coming up quicker um but it would be this is just typical like i'm not too worried of that because it was two pounds at the start of the run at the end of the run it was only five you know what i mean like realistically that's definitely as i was just saying woody that'd be where like it's still just a standard mls gasket um we don't have an o-ring or anything like that in the head this would be like if i wanted to run the car at that power level regularly this is where i would go to a better cylinder head seal uh sealing solution like an o-ring um the head studs are literally just your like I say bog stock ARPs, they're not like yeah. big fancy ARP, like L19s or 625s or anything, because again, I don't need that much power. Like, yep. It's, um, that was more just for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> 645 horsepower, and that's crazy to see. I'll go back to the pressure difference there too, yeah, so a difference in that top run. Yeah, so the, that's what we were just saying there. So the yellow cursor here represents the boost pressure, which you can see on here is 27.86 pounds is what we were measuring. Um, and then the back pressure at that same point, which is this one here, was 32.51. So that's sort of starting to give you an idea. I mean, you can do some quick math if you want. Um, so the more now you're, getting out, now you're running out of efficiency with that, so the more you... Yeah. While you're running. It's, so, yeah. so even still, it's only like maybe 1.16 or yeah. so, 1.1, 1.2. Yep. But as we sort of said before, this is exactly what we will see, is that at first, at low boost pressures, it's literally better than 1 to 1. It's then 1 to 1. It's then slightly worse than 1 to 1. And then it just gets exponential. We, maybe, yeah. we only added a, a you know, 3 pounds of boost or whatever, but the back pressure went up significantly. And this is what you'll see when you start to, uh, you know, essentially it's... The engine's calling for a bigger turbine wheel. Sweet. So next time on the Skid Factory, we're installing a G42. <laughs> no, no, no. And we no, pull no. the head off again. I mean, <laughs> we put, 
O-rings or something. You know? So what is next for the car then? So, of course, I suppose you're, you're not going to do any more runs, are you? Or? Nah, we're, we're done. That verifies the boost control system is now tuned in all the areas of power that I need. Yep. Um, so next for the car will be road trip. Uh, Sweet. Road trip is what we do. Um, I think I need to put another gearbox in it, though, because seriously, fourth gear is not happy. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. Back so, to the shed. Back to the skin. <laughs> oh, sweet. That's all we're going to see from the K74 now. Next up is Road Trip. When's that? It's coming up next. April 5th, 6th, and yeah, 7th. Yeah, next month. So stay tuned for that. This is one rowdy car, and I'm keen to throw some GoPros in there when it's at the track. So thanks for watching. We first set out to just do a comparison of a three port versus four port. We lifted the head. That was last episode. We got that fixed. This time we've got the new GFB gate on there, fix the diff and back on the dyno. So 645 horsepower is a pretty stout effort from a K series, I think. And no correction too. We could put the correction on there. Oh, the correction! A few extra horsepower. Oh, wait, that's definitely 670 Are horsepower. We there. Some more for free <laughs> Let's get some extra. <laughs> Thanks for watching, dudes. See you next time. Enjoy. Cheers. Yeah, go on. Show me the corrections. You should lay the crown map over there too. Oh, we got 53 with Ooh, the correction. Oh, I reckon you could run 30 pound and that would definitely match the crown. <laughs> it's a manual though, auto, oh, come on. Oh, definitely. Who's is bigger, hard, come on, someone yeah. goes harder. Yeah, righto, righto. Oh, this sick. definitely weighs less, there's no argument. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's mine. I suck it on this side. Okay. Yours is. Yeah, that'd be mine. Yeah. Yeah, you whack. That's killing me. It's actually hurting me. Okay. Apparently, everybody wants a squeaky hammer back. Pardon? I was like, man, that was like the most repeated comment. I was like, where's the squeaky hammer? Steel hammer if you want to use that. Yeah, we like the radiator cap still off. Yeah, maybe this can. Go for it, muscles. Oh, that came straight out with ease. Oh, first go. <laughs>